Hello everyone, Lil Dude here from Overachiever. Welcome back to Knights and Bikes. Today we are covering all of the game's achievements, in other words, how to get 1000 game score. So remember, if you'll find the video useful and want us to create more content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notified when something new is uploaded. Also, make sure to check our social media linked in the description to see what we are up to next and if you have a particular game in mind you want us to cover, drop it in the comment section below. You get an achievement for completing every day of the game, 6 in total. To see how to get these, check our full walkthrough video link below as we cover these achievements there. This one is for all other achievements apart from those. There are two parts in this video. In the first one we will show you the treasure tins in all 7 locations. I have ordered them as you would get them through normal progression. In the second part we will talk about all of the other achievements in the same manner. In the golf course we have 3 treasure tins and you can get them in day 2. The first one you get is shortly after you start the course. It's kinda like a tutorial one. Along the way, in an area where you move south, look west and on the other piece of land you will see the tin. Use Nessa's disc to reach it. After the raven fight, walk south passing some rabbits and step on the plate. A piece of land to the right will start to rotate and when the tin is closest to you, release the plate. Get the treasure with Nessa's disc and the Lynx loot achievement will pop. In the harbor we have 4 treasure tins and you can collect them in day 3. Just as you enter the harbor destroy the old welcome sign and get your first tin. Somewhere in the southwest you will see a machine. Use it to get into the house and get another tin. You will find the telescope somewhere east and near it, if you destroy the small cages, you will find the third tin. A little south from the previous location, you will find the board of a guy on a boat. Interact with it and destroy the two targets. It will show you 4 target locations. One is south, one is north, up a ramp and west, one is west, down a ramp and south all the way till the end of the map. And the last one is close to the entrance of the harbor. Return to the guy to take the tin and the harbor hoard achievement will pop. In the theme park we have 5 treasure tins also in the third day. After you pass the first door go a little west and enter the well. Talk to the gnomes and find your first tin. At the lost and found house, go northeast to find the second one. After you get the balloons ability, go back from the lost and found house and find the next one. After the fight with the librarian mobs, going south you will pass the treasure tin and in order to get it continue south and then west to destroy the fuse box. This will stop the spinning of the machine. Return and take the tin. When the environment turns bluish, go east and north and reach the kitty looking thing. After destroying all of the targets, its eyes will turn into targets as well. Destroy them, get the last treasure tin and the Peaky Prize achievement will pop. In the scrapyard we have 8 treasure tins and you can get them in day 4. Just as you enter the scrapyard you will find the first one. When you reach the shore go east along it, use the plunger and get the second one.
after you use the crane to move junk and letters, use the plunger and go up. West and south, use the console, return and get the tin. If you go south here, you will reach a crane battle. After it, you can use the crane to get the tin. In the fridge area, if you go a little west, you will find a console that opens the east door. There you will find another tin. After you solve the puzzle in the dungeon and the chest is positioned in the circle, go back west to find another one. The last two tins are in this zone, one far west. And one on the other side, if you can see little Demelza in the top right grabbing it. The scrapyard stash achievement will pop. There are two treasure tins in the caravan park, but you won't be able to get them till day 4 when you get the mud wheels from Oba. Go southeast from the place you exit the caravan, cross the mud and go around the small house for the first one. Continue southeast and find the second tin on a small piece of land. Use Nessa to get it. The caravan cash achievement will pop. In the wilderness we have a total of 11 treasure tins and you can get all of them in day 4 as you need the mud wheels for some of them. Going on the dirt road you will eventually reach a bench. Go west up the small hill and find the first tin. Following the road at the keep tidy board go north to find another one. Go back on the road and at the bench you stopped for the first tin. Go east, throw the rock with both of your characters and the new tin will appear. Go in the bike shop and somewhere on the right you will find the fourth. From the roundabout go south, southeast. Go back, continue northeast, find a fire and put it out. Continue the road as you see in the video and when you reach the white car go north just before the bridge. Still on the main road continue till you reach the fuel sign. Circle it and follow the horse tracks. Use the Melza's boots and get the tin. A little west from the fuel sign you will find the sales house. Go south and up the rock through a small entrance. Go back on the main road and go south as you see. Enter the field going west and then north in the dragon house.
from the house go southwest through the entrance and then west. Use a balloon and you will reach your last scene from the wilderness. Of course, with a wilderness wonga achievement. In the quarry, we have 10 treasure tins that can be obtained from day 5. Destroy the rock. Go through the small entrance, step on the plate and enter. The red waterfall has a small entrance, and there is a tin inside. After the stone rises and you get the bikes, go west to find the tin. Go down the slope at the guy with the chest and the shield-like thing and enter the cave two times. Then go south and east. When you get to these two swords, continue west and north, pull a sword, go down and the tin will be west. After you go down here, go west and let the Melza use the plunger. Walk on the form path and get the tin. Pull the sword with the plunger and get the seventh tin. When you get to this zone, go down on the first slope and enter the cave. After the penguins, destroy this rock and go east, down and in the cave. Go through the small entrance, go down and you will find the last treasure tin. The Puffin's Plunder achievement will pop. You won't need two controllers for this one. When you reach the tutorial where you learn how to heal, Leave the AI character with the hand hanging for 30 seconds. The leave him hanging achievement will pop. Put Nessa behind Demeza and throw the disc at max power. Switch fast to Demeza and try to kick the disc 5 times. It's kinda hard getting the exact time of the kicking and as I am counting the 5th time in the video is kinda weird but eventually the Keepy Uppies achievement popped. The achievement states that both of the characters should have one point of HP left when you heal, but for me it popped when I healed with only Demelza having one point and Nessa a couple of them. If it doesn't work for you like that, then bring both of them to one HP and heal and the cutting it fine achievement should pop. You can do this anytime. When one of your characters is down, revive them with the other one and the day leave achievement will pop. In day 3, when you get Nessa a bike too, the saddle up achievement will pop. In the harbor, in day 3, go far east. You have to do 3 things for the peer pressure achievement. 1. Hit the target at the witch dunk 2000. 2. Interact with the guy on the boat and destroy the two targets. He will show you 4 target locations. One is south. One is north, up a ramp, and west. One is west, down a ramp, and south all the way till the end of the map. And the last one is close to the entrance of the harbor. M3, jump on the targets in this order. Bottom left, bottom right, middle top, top left, 
and top right. The peer pressure achievement will pop. I think you can do this after we get the bike for Nessa. I did it in the theme park in day 3. Go into the menu and then in the customized submenu. Find the stabilizers and select no stabilizers. The coming of age achievement will pop. In the theme park in day 3, along your way you will find the kitty head. Interact with it, your characters will go in the head and the head space achievement will pop. After you get the balloon ability in the theme park, go northeast and splash the balloons on 5 seeds. Go a little south for one more. The same, south and one more. West of the house, put the fire out and splash the 8th one. There is one more a little southwest from the house, again after you put the fire out. The last 3 are southeast, this will lead to the blooming lovely achievement popping. Also in the theme park in day 3, after you leave the toilet, go east, use the plunger and enter the house. Interact with the plate and choose jam, more jam and cream. The sword in the scone achievement will pop. For this one, you just have to ride your bike and after 100 miles, for me it was on day 4, the Tour de Pen Furzi achievement will pop. You get the balloon ability in the theme park, so after that, in day 4, would be a good time to return to the harbor and do this. You have 4 shrimps to water, the first one just east of the entrance, the second one far southwest, the third one north of the previous one. and the last one east of the second. The prawn cocktail achievement will pop. On your way to the scrapyard, on day 4, you will come across a dragon house. Enter it and when you exit, the Meza will have a hay armor on her and the hay you guys achievement will pop. In day 4, you will get the charge ability from Oba. Charge 10 enemies and the charge achievement will pop. Also in day 4, at the scrapyard, where you must use a crane to make room to cross, arrange the letters to spell bum and the root spelling achievement will pop. You can do this as early as the end of day 4, using the Melza's ability to control enemies. Control one and attack another. The She Made Me Do It achievement will pop. When Honkers has a dark cloud above his head, you must feed him. After 10 times, for me it was in day 4, the foie gras achievement will pop. You will find a lot of loot in the bushes, those shiny things. After 200 of them, the diamond in the rough achievement will pop. I didn't focus on gathering loot and I got it in day 5, you can get it sooner if you want to. After you get Nessa's ability to put a stereo down, you need to find an area with 3 enemies and use it. The salt and pepper shakers achievement pops. In day 5, with the gauntlet ability, go to the golf course and just as you start, go far east and north. Start the engine and enter the cave. Interact with the triangle and eventually the pyramid headland will pop. Wait for Honkers to get a dark cloud above his head and then feed him. Wait for him to take a poop and try to get an enemy close by. Use the Melzal's boots to splash the poop in the enemy. The scattershot achievement will pop. Put the stereo down and possess it with the Melza. Then do the same to the balloon. The top of the pops achievement will pop.
For our last achievement, we will have to possess 6 enemies with Demelza. You can do all of them in day 6. These are the Fury, the Hand, the Sword, the thing with all the letters, the kitty, and probably the hardest one, the genie. Finally, the last achievement, run the gauntlet pot. This is all for the achievements that you get throughout the game. Remember that if you want to see how to finish the 6 days achievements, check our other video linked below. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching this one and make sure to like and subscribe for more. Check our social media linked in the description and until next time, keep popping those achievements.